a C note, a Benjamin, or a yard. All slaying for a $100 bill. The value of the staple of American currency has changed over time, but it's still an important dividing line. A dinner slightly over $100 seems so much more expensive than one hair under $100. Similarly, if you bet less than $100, it's a small, somewhat insignificant amount, more for fun. Over $100, it feels like a more substantial wager, and it may become an issue, which is why I'm proposing the PGA Tour set a limit of $100 for it, all its players to be able to bet on any golf event. Gambling in golf has been part of the fabric of the game since it started in Holland or Scotland. Right, Phil? And since the Supreme Court in 2018 struck down the federal ban on betting, this country has devoured gambling like a cookie monster with a fresh package of Oreos. Cookies! Um, nom, 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 nom. Yet two Corn Ferry Tour players, Jake Stiano and Vince India, were recently suspended for violating the tour's integrity program by gambling. It seems more ironic that the tour has an integrity program which bans gambling by its players, yet it has official relationships with six betting operators. Bet365, BetMGM, BetParks, DraftKings, FanDuel, PointsBet, and recently opened a DraftKings-backed sportsbook at TPC Scottsdale. Stiano and India bet small amounts on golf, and not all of it was on PGA Tour golf. Stiano bet a total of $116.20 across four bets, $25 on Bryson DeChambeau to make a birdie on a par 5 in a PGA Tour event in 2021, and three bets on the match, the November 2021 exhibition between DeChambeau and Brooks Kepka. Maybe irony was not harsh enough, but let's be serious. Betting less than a C note on golf is just plain fun and no one is trying to get rich, just entertain. Research by Stanford University in 2009 and a story in the Springer's Journal of Gambling Studies in 2014 concluded that gambling for the majority of people is fun, and gambling on golf is fun. Instead of acting like the fun police, the PGA Tour needs to lighten up and allow a fundamental tenet of the game to proceed for everyone, including its own players. It's possible that old Tom Morris was turning in his grave when the three and six month suspensions were announced by the PGA Tour. Even Old Tom gambled on golf in challenge matches, so why not allow the current PGA Tour player? The limit of $100 makes it a safe bet that the game and its integrity will not be blemished if, say, Ricky Fowler bets $100 on Brian Harmon to win the British Open. The story behind that would be entertaining. Who in fact is getting hurt? So what do you think on this? Do you think players should be allowed to golf? I mean, do you think that PGA Tour players should be allowed to bet on one another? Let me know down below. This is an article written by Alex Michelli, or Maselli, a journalist and radio TV personality who's been involved in golf for 26 years, was the founder of Morning Read, and eventually sold it to Buffalo Group. He continues to contribute writing, podcasts, and videos to SI.com. Thanks so much for tuning in, my friends. Oh, yeah. Let me know what you think down below. That's it.